up everybody, it's your boy Connor. We have Zen here in the corner. We have Sir Isaac Newton back here. Isaac is chilling and killing like a villain. Today's video is gonna be about the speedo relocation. We got this kit from Speed King Cycles. It is a whole lot easier than tracking down each individual parts. Essentially what they have done is they give you the tack set and they also piece together a cable kit from Gorilla Cables and we paired it with a LA Choppers T-bar mount. If you do not have a bar and riser combo and you're not able to have your speedo tack combo mounted onto the top of your clamp riser similar to the, the hard case performance, this is another option where all you do is remove these Allen bolts here on the bottom and it's gonna have this lower portion come off or separate and then you can fit it between the T-bars and it will secure it. Now before we get to removing our speedo and tack, we're gonna remove the power vision because currently it's just way too much going on. We have our iPhone that we moved the RAM out already. It is backed on the table. And if we had the iPhone up there with the power vision, with the speedo and tack, it's gonna look like we're about to go into space. It's gonna make riding just a little bit more comfortable where when you're riding and you're trying to figure out, oh dude, what is my speed limit? You're looking down, looking up, you try to figure out, guessing your speed. It's gonna eliminate that a little bit. It's not too out of the way, but it is just kind of annoying to look down, especially when we're trying to get some motor vlog footage, trying to figure out our speed is. And it's gonna allow us the ability to just look at the horizon, see the speed that we're going, all in one, we're just moving our eyes. And that's gonna make it a lot easier. Now let's go ahead and jump into it and start relocating these gauges. Carol Baskins. So for this, you're gonna need a set of drag specialties dual gauge. I'm gonna say cluster for this. And it comes with the backing plates from Speed Kings. So you have one for each side. And also from the kit from Speed Kings comes with this extension kit from Gorilla Cables, which is just all plug and play that way you don't have to do any splicing. And then this little hockey puck that is sliding around is going to cover your stock hole that's gonna be left there. And then what is not included in the kit that you can pick up from your local Harley is going to be the gaskets that go on the back of this for the plates, and that's it. So first things first, you're gonna go ahead and remove your dash to give you access to your Speedo and tack. If you only have a Speedo, this is how you will do it, the same way. You're gonna go ahead and unplug them, and then you unscrew your Speedo and tack, or just your Speedo from your dash, and it will let it come out. There's the tack. And now we have our Speedo. Place everything back how you found it. We will be replacing those holes with the pucks from Hardcase Performance. There is the HD part number for those gaskets. These do not come with the Speed King gauge relocation kit. And then you're just gonna remember your orientation of your Speedo and TAC cables so that we know where the black and where the gray. And at this really fast time lapse is a lot of finicking with it and we realize it's not gonna fit. What's up everybody? We had a bit of a hiccup yesterday with our gauges where the LA Choppers bar clamp that we got was just a little too small. We thought these bars were an inch in diameter but they are in fact more than an inch, an inch and a quarter. So we went ahead and ordered the other one. We have the other one in our scrap pile that we'll probably use at a later point in time, maybe on the sporty or just sell it locally. But today what we're doing is we're gonna be removing the fork lowers from the triple tree. We've already pulled out a spacer. What we're gonna be doing is going to our local Harley dealership simply because we tried with the 12 millimeter to get the fork screw out, but by yourself it's a little cumbersome because this fork lower rotates. And we had come up with this master plan of an idea where we're like, oh, let's put this piece of wood between them and that way when it rotates, it'll stop. But then we put the piece of wood in there, it was nice and seated and we started rotating and it rotated outward and the piece of wood fell out. We were just like, really? Come on now. So we're gonna go ahead and remove and pull them, drain the oil from them. And then we're gonna go to our local hardy shop. That way it can hit with a torque wrench, just boom, boom, one and done, just loosen it, break it loose. And then we'll come home and loosen ourselves and to tighten it, we can get it to spec with that and we'll have some of the Cedar Park guys come through here and just help out and be part of the process when everything gets back together. But the reason why we're kind of trying to rush it is just so that way Saturday morning, we can go ahead and hit up the powder coat and be like, hey, I'm swinging everything by, that way I can just drop it off, get everything prepped, get things that need to be sandblasted, sandblasted, and start getting this stuff under powder and that way we can be good to go and get this back as soon as possible. And here we are now loosening our pinch bolts to allow the forks to slide out. What isn't shown is we've already loosened our fork cap 
and remove the spacer that goes inside it. Whenever you are doing this, just know that it is under a lot of tension and it may just pop and give you a little bit of a fright. And now we're gonna take a trip to our local Harley. We're back. I wanna give a huge shout out to Rolando and Worm over at Central Texas Harley Davidson because they hooked it up. They helped me out with breaking this 12 millimeter bolt that's on here because by ourselves with just the standard tool, we were never gonna get it. Never gonna get it. And it made it a whole lot easier. Where that's one thing that we will definitely be getting is an impact wrench. That way we can just hit it get it gone good where we were doing all kinds of stuff trying to force this all the way over here and with the impact it's just a quick little one two so much easier and now we're just going to go ahead and finish take out that fork screw at the bottom so that way we can loosen up the damper rod pull that out and then we can break apart the fork assembly and get the lowers prepped and off to go get sandblasted powder coated we're getting closer where the disassembly for the most part is done. We still need to do the dual gauges whenever we get the proper clamp here. We can do that, finish that up, and we will be rock and rolling a lot closer to the final reveal. What's being shown here is we are placing the spring back inside the fork tube, and it gives some weight to the damper rod so it's not just spinning freely in the fork lower. Now all that's left to do is remove the dust cap and then you're gonna just pop it up and down several times to get the fork tube out of the fork lower or fork slider. We will have the fork assembly completely disassembled and we will take off all the gaskets because we have a new gasket set from Speaking Cycles that we picked up that we'll be putting on whenever it is time to put everything back together once we have the fork lowers back from powder. This is where we forgot to take out the retaining clip and where we must have tried 30 times to remove the fork tube from the fork lower, only to remember we need to remove additional items like the dust seal and that retaining clip. Took us a bit to finagle it, but we got it and the second fork tube was much easier now that we knew the process. Okay, so one of the things that we noticed that we failed to do on that first one We'd already started cracking, trying to separate the tube from the fork lower. And then we saw that there was this seal. I was, I, I couldn't remember if this was supposed to be taken off, lifted, and we were trying and then we're like, you know what? Let's watch a video. For some reason, I completely slipped my mind that in order for you to separate the fork tube from the fork lower, work smarter, not harder. You have to remove this and then the clip, that way it's, and that way it's free to slide out. What, pretty much what we were doing is we were burying this clip into the seal that's below it and it was kind of buried in there because we were trying to force everything out all at once. It was just, what? No real reason why it should have been that difficult, but we're gonna go ahead and continue on and finish this half. Hopefully it goes by a lot smoother now that we did that other one. Much better. Now you could reuse this if you wanted, just be careful when you take it off, but we're getting in there, might as well replace everything. So we're just gonna remove this clip that's in here. This looks a whole lot different than that last one we did. That's how easy it was to get this little clip out. And on the last one we had to really go hunting for it. We had to move some of this other seal that's in there. So there's that, and now we're gonna see how many times it takes us to remove this. So, what's that? There's that, so one, two. That is how it should be. I don't know what we were doing that last go around. Just something that I like to do is I'll take photos of how everything's laid out for reference. Sure, there are places to check out online forums, videos, but a lot of times these videos, they don't cover that. So I just like to see the orientation, how everything is, the different gaskets, rings, bearings, whatever you want to call them. I'm not even sure what they are, but this is the overall setup. You have this other seal here on top. You have this little metal spacer. I'm not sure what this one is. And then you have this bottom one that you will remove before you put on the other one. 
We got all new stuff. We're not gonna be taking apart the forks anytime soon after this. We will be changing the internals at some point. Probably go with Patriot suspension. Uh, and that you can just do with the top end. Just take off those tops and then you're good. this week's video if you enjoyed it be sure and hit that like button hit that subscribe button and while you're there bump on over and hit that bell to be notified of any future videos when they drop as soon as they drop and as a reminder be sure and check out our teespring store where you can get some channel merch as well as checking out our patreon for only five dollars a month or the equivalent of a coffee a month you can help support the channel what can you look forward to in the following fxlr rebuild series well we will be getting the correct diameter size of the t-bar clamp from la chopper we went ahead and already ordered it. It's in route, and that will allow us to finish our dual gauge install. I'm really excited to see how they look. Just mocking them up, I get all giddy inside. We're also gonna be installing our longer brake line and our longer clutch line. And hopefully, fingers crossed, that we get our fork lowers back from powder relatively quickly, and that way we can reassemble our forks, add our upgraded damper rods from Tracker Die, and get the front end back together and ready for wheels. So until then, I'll catch y'all the next one, ride safe. Cheers.